Denton Conte is an exceptional athlete who lifts extreme weights in deadlifts and in squats, but also performs statics like the Iron Cross or the Full Planche with ease. In this podcast interview, you will learn a lot about Denton's planche advice and how you can improve your planche workouts. We also talk about how leg workouts help you improve your statics and some nutrition advice to get your statics on the next level. You're gonna lose your planche then, don't train your legs. And I was like, man, just let me do my thing, man. Don't judge me. If you, if you support me, then, you know, then support me in, in what I do. You can already look forward to the second episode coming in one week. In the description you can find again all the chapters of this interview with all the topics that we talked about. Keep growing guys and enjoy this interview. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gorilla Nation. My name is Phil and today's guest is somebody who combines extreme statics like the full planche with extremely heavy deadlifts, squats and weighted calisthenics. I'm happy to welcome from London, Denton Kante. Hello. Thank you so much for letting me on this show. I'm looking forward to our interview conversation. Me too. Everything is good on your side. You're good. All good, thanks. All good. How are you doing? I'm good as well. Thank you. I'm also really looking forward to the interview. Um, I think uh, the people who know you are like really uh, interested in, in your story and your uh, his background in uh, your sports career, let's call it, um, because you're, you're quite a special athlete uh, when I have to think of somebody who lifts really heavy, uh, heavy weights yeah. in deadlift and squats and does like a full planche and uh, uh, Maltese and like you're re really strong. And uh, that's, that's why. I'm really looking forward to this interview and that's why people requested you. So yeah, maybe you want to kick off presenting yourself. Who are you? What do you do? How do you see yourself? So my name is Denton Conte. I'm li I live in London, but I was actually born in Ukraine. I'm half Ukrainian and half Sierra Leonean. But I came to London when I was three and a half and I've been living uh, all my life since then. Uh, so yeah, I've been doing calisthenics, advanced calisthenics for the past eight years. But before that, I was doing like various sports. I did like uh, athletics was my main sport. I did like triple jump for a couple of years. I used to represent the UK in triple jump. I was like seventh in the UK at one point in 2012. But then I kind of stopped doing that because I got injured in the knees because mm -hmm. it's quite an impactful sport. But that's kind of where my leg strength comes from is from the athletic background I used to do. And when I was super young, like when I was like six years old and above, I did a bit of tumbling, mm -hmm. like a bit of gymnastic tumbling. Um, that's where I did all the, all the flips from anyway. Um, but I did that for a few years, but my main sport was athletics. So sprinting, triple jumping. And um, yeah, so after that, after my um, career ended in triple jump, I started doing, I just went to the gym, started doing weights, just general weights, like everyone trying to get big. I was like, what, 16 when I started lifting weights, like just trying to get big. And then when I turned 17, I came across a, a video on YouTube, uh, Hannibal for King. <laughs> He's the guy who got me started. So I, I came across his video. To be fair, my friend showed me his video first and I was like, oh my days, this guy is crazy. He's, he's, he's hench, he's strong. And I was like, I want to learn that stuff. So me and him, literally, we was in school, we was in college actually, we was in college, just sitting there bored on our laptops and he, and he came across the video and I was like, hey, he's like, show Danny, look at this. And I was like, oh, let's give this a go. So every single day after college, we started going like to the park, started doing pull-ups, push-ups, L-sits, just basically copying what he done in the video, just copying everything he did. Um, but I kind of picked up things pretty fast because I've been I've been doing so advanced calisthenics. I started in, when I was 17, so that's been, it's eight, eight years now. But before that, I've always kind of evolved like push ups and pull ups in like my routine from a young age. I've always been doing like basic, I would say basic calisthenics. But I didn't know I was doing it. I was just it was just part of my training. I used to always like work it out at home in my bedroom. I was doing like pull ups, push ups in my bedroom, like doing core workouts every single day, like every night. So I kind of had a strong base from that anyway. So when I kind of started, um, literally I just copied everything Hannibal King done. So I did like muscle ups. I was doing front, like, I, I tried to do like his planche. Uh, you know, he does like a lean, leaning forward, bit of banana, but I kind of had that straight away. But then I realized that it was actually bad form. So I looked into like, just watched gymnastic videos and kind of saw how they trained. And I saw, okay, they focus on like form, like attraction, arm straight, so I was like, let me try to focus on doing that. And yeah, that's how it all kicked off, really. Just watching Hannibal for King to get me inspired, doing a street workout and then gymnastics as well. Just watch them and just try to perfect the movements. But yeah, that's how I got started. Wow. 
so half Ukrainian. This is something that I have to uh, like <laughs> have to uh, talk about uh, because I'm always impressed. Like people where I think like, for example, the, the episode with uh, Saibov. Yeah, I thought he's Polish. And then in the interview, he said, no, he's Ukrainian. So yeah, he's Ukrainian. <laughs> yeah, he's Ukrainian. <laughs> there are so many strong athletes in Ukraine. Uh, do you do you know why? I think it's just like if you look, if you, even if when I first um, came across like street worker in Ukraine, like all of them are just strong. Everyone can just plant from Ukraine. Like I think it's part of our DNA, part of our blood. If you're Ukrainian or Russian, you you can plant. You get a free plant. You know, out of all the skills that I learned, yeah, plant was my first skill. Wow. Like I learned plant before everything. So yeah, just plant was my first one, then front lever, then back lever. But yeah, plant for some reason I learned it pretty easily, pretty quickly as well. Um, but then again, it's because for most of my life, I've been doing push-ups. Mm -hmm. So I had a general great pushing strength. Like people, like beginners who asked me how to get into like calisthenics, like how to get into learn, like planching. I always say like, you need to be able to do like 50 push-ups, like easily, Fif like 50 dips, 30 to 50 dips at least. But I always say like, have really good pushing strength, Just have a strong base, then start doing like handstand push-ups against the wall just to kind of get the shoulders shoulders going. And once you can do like a good 10 assisted handstand push-ups, then I always say that then you start doing planche leans and um, tuck, tuck planches and take it from there. But I always say like, you need to have a really strong pushing base. So I spent literally, yeah, since I was six years old, I've been doing push-ups a lot. So I think that gave me like a really good head start in terms of um, advanced calisthenics. So yeah, it's always down to like, the basics first spend years doing the basic movements then try the advanced i always see guys try to learn planche but they can't even do like 30 push-ups so i'm like it doesn't make any sense you know mm -hmm. so you need to have like the general foundations first then you then go off to the like it's like any sport anyway it's like any any kind of sport basics first then you start to you know progress it from there <laughs> Sure. And when you talk about advanced calisthenics, um, that's something that I don't hear too regular. What does it mean for you? So I mean like, so advanced in terms of starting skills. Mm -hmm. So literally eight, so eight years of skill. I've been doing eight, uh, eight years doing skills, but pretty much most of my life just doing basics. Okay. So, yeah. That's so what basics, I mean, yeah. basics uh, is like push-ups from push year six on. Like push-ups, different variations of push-ups, dips, uh, chin-ups, pull-ups, L-sits, core exercises. So just the basic like beginner kind of moves. But I spent like time just perfecting volume, like doing lots of lots of reps for, yeah, like um, push-ups, trying to get up to like sets of 50, for example, sets of 50 dips, sets of 20 pull-ups. Once I had that, then literally learning the, the advanced skills. So trying to get a front lever wasn't really too hard or a, a planche and so on. If it yeah. wasn't for those, if, if it wasn't for my youth and my athletics background, it would have taken me a long time to achieve advanced skills. So I definitely am thankful for like, just, yeah, from, from when I was young, like I, I was always like very energetic. So my parents just got me to, just got me doing sports from a young age. And I think that's what kind of gave me a, a good head start in, 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 in learning skills. Sure, because it's quite unusual. You, you're also quite high, uh, like uh, quite tall, right? Uh, how, how? Yeah, I think I'm like, I'm like, between 178 to 180 centimeters mm -hmm. so like about five foot 11 and i weigh like 75 kilos 75 to 77 kilos okay. when i like i prefer to be 74 but it just my weight goes up and down it's just yeah like between 75 to 77 that's the way i'm the, that's, my, that's my weight okay and that's, i don't know that's, that's all. did you did you say in the beginning how how old you are so i'm oh i'm 25 years old now 25 25 okay. years old family man i've got a kid that's nearly two years old wow you know so yeah <laughs> I'm, i feel old i feel older than i am nice, right? <laughs> it's funny you're yeah. like uh, the same height as me the same weight as me and the same age as me so uh yeah i'm, I'm right, just wondering to, okay i'm just missing the ukraine uh ukraine genetics this is why i'm not able to do the full plan i guess so. <laughs> oh probably that's that's the secret man <laughs> nice so you already told us a little bit about your beginnings in calisthenics and how you got yeah. into uh, into your first workouts after seeing Hannibal, after improving yeah. with a gymnastics form. Can you maybe fast forward, uh, tell us a little bit the story from from really from your work, first workout ever to today, um, to your workouts today? Yeah, so literally just began just doing only calisthenics, literally only body weight. 
so so my body weight my advanced calisthenics journey like when i started doing calisthenics properly like with without nothing else started in 2014 that's when i uh, started trying to learn planche all my skills and um i was doing street workout for two years so literally doing freestyle when just i was always a static guy i never really enjoyed freestyle i love statics i did a bit of freestyle when i competed because you kind of had to otherwise you don't get no points you don't win so from 24 so 2014 to 2016 i was doing freestyle calisthenics and statics however from 2016 i shifted over to weighted calisthenics so 2016 to 2018 i started doing reps and sets so i started doing weighted calisthenics so weighted dips, weighted pull-ups, uh, weighted, just everything weighted, basically. Um, so I started doing that from, yeah, from 2016 till, till about 2018, 2019. So I started um, competing in that as well because I kind of found that a bit more, a bit more fair because you kind of go up against guys who are your weight and it's just strict like pull-ups, uh, weighted pull-ups or strict form, weighted dips or strict form and muscle-ups and so on. So I did that for a few years. I became UK champion a couple of times as well doing that um, for my So I was, I was middleweight champion because I actually gained weight. So when I was doing street workout, I was about 70, like what I am now, 74 kilos, 75 around that, around that weight. But then when I, do, when I did the weighted calisthenics, I put on a lot of weight. I went mm. to like 80 kilos, 81 kilos. Wow. But I didn't do as much skill training anymore. I, didn't, I did a bit of statics, but I didn't really maintain it as much. I kind of focused more on the weighted. Did that, yeah, so I did that for a couple of years because in the UK, like it was quite a big thing. The reps and sets. I'm not sure if um, anyone knows about the, the hard hitters before Ranjit, Bachu, Solo, Nero, Theo. Yeah. Them not got um, weight calisthenics started in the UK and it kind of just blew up. So I kind of got inspired by them and just tried to, yeah, try to do what they were doing. Uh, even end, ended up training with them as well, which was an honor for me. So you yeah, did that for a couple of years. Um, and then I also started doing powerlifting too, as well as that in. Yeah, about 2018, I started doing powerlifting. Um, The heavy squats, deadlifts, and so on. Um, Yeah, powerlifting, I just wanted to kind of, yeah, just, I basically wanted to try something new because I also began to work in the gym as well. So right now I'm a personal trainer Mm -hmm. and I work in the gym and working, I used to work in a really big gym. And I think being a trainer, like not everybody wants to do calisthenics. So I have a lot of people that want to do calisthenics, but people also said, oh, like, I want to learn how to lift weights, lose, just general losing weight, lifting weights off. Well, let me try to do different training aspects so that way I can then teach it to people. Because if I get someone that comes to me and says, I want to learn how to squat and deadlift, I'm going to be like, I don't even know. I can't do it myself, so I can't really teach you. So mm-hmm. I thought, let me try to broaden my own knowledge and try to learn new things and have strong legs. And uh, and kind of, I thought, I took it from there. So when I started training my legs, I thought, okay, my legs are kind of strong already. So I just it became a passion. I started going into more powerlifting as well. started doing the bench press, squat and deadlift. And yeah, I just fell in love with it. But then I also have now gone back to just skill training. So now, right now, to be fair, I do everything now. So I'm doing static. So mainly statics now and powerlifting. And I do a bit of weighted calisthenics on the side as well. But right now I'm, I'm training like all three in one go. So wow. statics every day. Mainly, most days I train statics anyway. I powerlift about three, three or four days, three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday. Yeah, so I, I static pretty much every day, including mm-hmm. and powerlift like three times a week as well, as well as like weight calisthenics too. So yes, yeah, it's, it's just it's all become like a heavy schedule. So it's all just right now. I'm just like I just want to be be a complete athlete. I want to kind of inspire people to actually. I mean, I'm not saying you have to like powerlift, but I think it's kind of cool to see someone that can squat and deadlift and bench press and I can also do statics because if you see the norm like there's like a wall between so people that power lift they look at us the street workout they say yeah they can't squat they can't they can't bench press they can't deadlift <laughs> and then you got street workout that say oh if you if you train your legs then you can't do statics and so I'm thinking hmm okay let me debunk those let me debunk that so let me be that guy that can do everything so that's my goal right now is to just be complete and and just enjoy training as, as a whole you know I mean being a specialist is cool. Like it's fine to just do statics or freestyle or reps, but personally, I just want all the gains. <laughs> I want to be strong in everything, and it keeps me like there's keeps my week going. You know, it keeps me sensible as well. So like I don't overtrain certain things. It's like I train statics one or two days, and I go and train like lower body for for example. So I kind of just mix my training up, but I make sure that it helps everything in one go as well. 
so that's just me. Yeah, just it went from just doing body weight to then a bit of reps and sets, and now it's gone to everything all in one now. Wow. So yeah. And until the the point where powerlifting came into your training schedule, you didn't train legs spe uh, specifically. No, I didn't. To be fair, like I so after athletics, right? So my athletics career ended in 2014, 2013, 2014. I didn't train legs at all. Like I just did only calisthenics. Literally in that in that three years, I just did only um, just statics mainly. Static, statics, freestyle, statics, a bit of reps, but then. Yeah, in 20, like 2018, that three years into my um, st um, career of calisthenics, I thought, let me try to train legs again. Let's see if I can still squat, bench press, deadlift. And yeah, I was kind of able to do it already. Like having that background, of course, having explosive legs already. Like I already already kind of had like 100 kilo squats and like a deadlift, like 170 kilo deadlift. So I thought, let me take it from there. And let me just try to boost these numbers up. And I actually still, I do want to actually like one day do like a powerlifting comp just for fun, like a little mm -hmm. regional one, just just, just a, something to put in my resume, just that, mm -hmm. that you've done that, you know. It's a good, a little good achievement to have. So I might, I'm still, I, I've been, I've been wanting to do it. I've been wanting to, to do that for a couple of years, but it's been up and down. But now everything is back to normal in UK anyway. Lockdown has eased now, kind of, mm -hmm. kind of. So I'm looking to just, yeah, focus on powerlifting and calisthenics and eventually just, yeah, compete in powerlifting one day, maybe like in a year or two, you know, we'll see what happens. Oh. And uh, one question that's, uh, yeah, I'm asking myself, are you still able to do a 360 today? 360, yeah, I like actually can. Must love 360 or something? Yeah, yeah. About, I don't, I mean, I know I can, but I don't really do much of the freestyle. I literally okay. just only do statics. Like, I just don't really care about freestyle anymore. I mean, I can, about, I think, about a year ago, I, because I used to, I used to do like a, a muscle, muscle up to a straight bar planche mm -hmm. and then like a push up 360 to a front lever. So I tried that last year and I still had it. Wow. So I guess you see, I, I, I found with like um, anything to do with tricking, like skills, tumbling. Because mm -hmm. remember I said I did tumbling from a young age, but then I didn't do that for like 10 years. And then when I did it, I started tumbling like last year, I started doing it again and literally had all my same tumbles that I did. Wow. Because it's like muscle memory. It's like, it's yeah. a thing where once you kind of, that once you've done it before, especially if you've done it for years, it doesn't really go away. Like anything that goes away is your awareness. All you need is one or two sessions back and the awareness is there. It's same with like 360s freestyle. Like the first 360 you might not catch, but the second one, okay, I know I know exactly where to go. I know when to let go and when to kind of see the bar. So yeah, I find with freestyle, it's like, it's not, it's more of a fear thing. It's not really, too, like even with tumbling, even with tricking, it's not, it's not really too hard. It's just, you have to have the balls to do it. True. Like back when I did stuff like calisthenics, like just freestyle, I was scared to do like all that stuff on the bar. Like I don't mind doing stuff on the floor, like tumbles and flips on the floor, because I know exactly where I am on the bar. I was scared. I was <laughs> so I thought, nah, I just stick, I stick to statics. But then I did a bit of freestyle anyway, just to kind of fit in. But I personally didn't like it. Okay. I just wanted to keep it only strength, just only strength. That's how I see it anyway. Cool. But yeah. In your beginnings, uh, really at the in your first street workouts, calisthenics uh, workouts, um, what was your goal? Was it the physique? Was it the strength? Was it oh, uh, my the my girls, goal was to, was to planch. My goal okay. was to planch. My goal was to do planch push ups. That was my number one goal. Like when I saw Hannibal for King do his planch push ups, I was like, I want that. I just wanted to be that guy that can do no legged push ups and show mm -hmm. off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was my number one goal was just was how to planch, how to planch, how to planch push up. But it's funny because it took me like, I learned, so shoulder planche, I learned it extremely fast. But it was actually, it wasn't clean though. It was quite, it was bad form because mm -hmm. I didn't know any better. I just, I used to watch like, you know, the general USA street workout guys that would, ju that would just use sheer strength with no technique. So I don't like a planche. So from a tuck planche, I learned a shadow planche in literally about a month, month and a half or two months. But that mm -hmm. was, wasn't perfect. It was like a piked, slightly bent arm. But I, but I straight away had planche push-ups because I literally learned the long the wrong way. All I did was, okay, I had a tuck planche. My my way of learning planche, even till this day, I, rec I always recommend handstand negative down to planche. For me, that was how I learned, how I learned it. Um, I find for me, that's one of the best ways because that way, because the first negative you're always going to do, it's going to be like, pew, it's going to be super quick. You're going to, yeah. but over time, Eventually, you're gonna learn how to slow it down, slow it down, and eventually catch it into a planche. That's how I learned my shadow planche and full planche. I learned it by doing negatives. Wow. I obviously I also did like from tuck to straddle as well. But I find that when I'm up in a handstand, it's very easy to kind of straddle your legs. 
So you get into position, then you just lower down and just and just brace, just literally just squeeze everything, squeeze your whole body and try to hold it. So I just kept doing that, like I kept doing that. And then eventually it just held. And I was like, oh my God, okay, let me film it. And I filmed it. It was a bit high, mm-hmm. but then I thought, okay, let me fix it up a little bit. So I filmed because at first I didn't film nothing. I just kept trying, trying. And you see when you think, oh yeah, I'm doing a planche, but it's actually like a half handstand. Yeah. So I filmed everything I did and just fixed it from there anyway. I've actually got my first ever video. It's on Facebook somewhere of my, of my first planche, planche pushups. It wasn't, it doesn't look too bad. It's a bit packed, it's a bit bent, but it's, it wasn't too bad. It, it, so to fix that, it took me about another two months just to get it straight and clean um yeah once i've kind of watched gymnastic videos but yeah people that always ask me how to do plant how to punch i always say have a good handstand and just lower down from there just keep trying to lower down that's my uh that's my first way of learning it and of course you've got the accessory like you know planch leans you got the frog straddle like with your like advanced straddle like advanced frog sorry advanced frog straddle planch just get used to doing that but and also i think you need some sort of um flexibility in your hips you need some good hip mobility for shadow anyway uh because mm-hmm. the, the easier you can open your legs then the, the more comfortable it will feel and you won't be like because i see a lot of guys they straddle and it's like their legs are bent and because it's because the hips are tight so i always kind of recommend like middle splits if you kind of i'm not saying be super i'm not flexible but have a good level of flexibility so when you open your legs it's not too tough so hip 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 flex needs to be flexible in the groin so i did like a lot of middle splits like before my training so that way, when I did a handstand, my legs just went, pew, just opened up nicely. Mm-hmm. So that's like my tips for straddle planche anyway. For straddle planche, having good open hips and having a good handstand to lower down. I find, for me, that's like a good way of learning. Wow. You already answered a lot of questions, a lot of uh, useful advice already. That's, yeah, of course. Uh, that's I, really I, cool. I, I, guess, I guess people will be asking how to planche, this and that. So that's just my tips for straddle anyway. But obviously, full planche is a bit different because like, you can have a straddle planche for like 20 seconds. doesn't mean you can have a full planche. Full planche is a bit different. It's more specific. So what I did for full planche, same thing. I did handstand negatives down to full planche, but I also did like, um, like a very advanced tuck. So like you got advanced tuck, but just advance a bit further just to work that hip just to extend that hip a bit more and do like advanced single legs and so on. And eventually just get by just doing attempts and it will just hold. It takes time, of course, all planches are different beast can, can better straddle, but it's really the same, like same principle, just keep consistent. Like I did, I used to train it, like I was, when I was, when I learned it back then, because it was a long time ago, but, um, and it's funny because when I started calisthenics, I was 17, right? I was 60, I was 62 kilos. I was super wow. light. But yeah, I was like, I literally had, I thought back then, I thought, yeah, I was hench. Like I was, you know, I was a big guy in school. Looking back, I was skinny. I was just, <laughs> I was just lean and ripped. I was lean and ripped. So I think I was about 62 kg when I learned. So I was 17 years old and I was 62 kilos. And in about two years, I went up to 70, 74 kilos. So calisthenics does build muscle, built me muscle. Anyway, it got me, got me bigger anyway. So I think that might have given me an edge because I was younger. I was lighter. Who knows? But um, that's how I learned anyway back then wow and from your first workout ever calisthenics to the first uh, good full planche hold how much uh, how long did it take it did not take me too long like because in about six months to get everything to get so from having a dodgy full planche about six months to get it even less i think about four to six months to get it decent to get it like straight like with locked arms and about to get it like, mm, mm, per, not per, I wouldn't say perfect. My planche isn't perfect. I mean, it's clean, but I wouldn't say perfect is a very, you know, it's a strong word. Nothing's perfect. But to get it like with decent form, about a year. It took me about a year to get it like with the like with a good hollow body with a nice hole. So like about a year, I had like a very clean 10 second planche with planche pushups. So a year into my street workout, I learned everything pretty quick. So planche was like my favorite, favorite one. And um, for front lever, for example, like, I, I did the same thing with front lever, negatives, upside down, legs open, coming down. I did exactly the same thing with my planche. I thought, okay, this is front lever planche is two opposites. So I just did the same thing of what I did in, for my planche anyway. So, but yeah, it took me um, not too long for front lever anyway. Front lever took me, because I mean, for me, it's easier than a planche, even though a planche is stronger, but front lever didn't take too long. And back lever was the same thing anyway. So for me, it's like anyone that asks me, I always say negatives negatives and attempts those are the two things and in accessory work you do like planche leans and you know and so on plant pseudo push-ups just to build um shoulder strength but it's all about negatives and attempts in in my experience anyway mm-hmm. 
Did you ever feel that your height is a disadvantage? Never. I actually never, ever once complained about my height. Because back when I started, I didn't really know about being tall, being small. I mean, I did know gymnasts were small. <laughs> but for me, it's like I never really use it as an excuse. Like if I want, like, if you want to move, you go get it. Like I've got a client, he's 47 years old, 48 years old. He's 191 centimeters. He's like 85 kilos. He's old. Um, well, obviously not old. He's young, of course, but older than most people like that do calisthenics, of course. Like well, I'm seeing a lot of older guys killing it now. It's crazy. But yeah, he um, took him to, took him uh, two years to learn in front. I've been working with him two years now. Same thing. I started with him doing basics, just pull-ups, push-ups, just the basic stuff first for the first couple months. And then finally, it took him about a year to get and he's tall and he's older so i'm looking at him and i'm just like there's no excuse his front leave was clean it's straight at that age as well so i think obviously okay yeah fair enough height is obviously a disadvantage but work with it i think i never ever let that get to me i never ever once i'm too tall for this i never i mean it's i mean i'm not exactly tall i mean it's like yeah you're tall but i think it's still possible to kind of get the moves anyway Just don't laugh. like even me like right now um people probably I've, i bet you any money people have asked how does he train legs and still maintain his statics <laughs> yeah. because i don't let i don't let those things get to my head i see it as okay having strong legs for example if you've got strong legs yeah think about it when you're doing a, a static hold you've got to squeeze your whole body as a unit together right you've got to squeeze everything so you've got to squeeze your butt your legs of course your upper body so the stronger you can squeeze your legs the stronger your position is going to be so I see is when I got my squat strong, and my deadlift strong, I learned a lot more about full body tension. I mean, even from before, from statics anyway, teach you that. But to get a really good form, you need to be able to like have strong glutes, have strong legs. So what I do when I planche, I literally put my legs together. I squeeze them as hard as I can. I point my toes and it just keeps me straight. Like I feel solid. So in, in no way has training legs has impacted my statics. It hasn't. Like I have... Like people can just say, oh yeah, because his legs aren't really big, but I don't train for size. Like I've never once trained for physique. I just train for performance. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just literally only do the compound. So I do my squat and deadlifts. I don't really do much accessories. I just do the main lifts and that's what I do. I don't bodybuild. I don't use machines. I don't really like use leg extensions and leg press because I find that that's the kind of stuff that, that might help grow you, like doing high volume on those smaller things because it's more isolated. But I just focus on compound lifts. So that works. That works the full body anyway. So that's probably how I haven't, I mean, my legs did grow a little bit. Like I've got like before my legs were very skinny, but now they're kind of, they're still, they're, they're shaped. I've got some quads coming out. I've got, I've got a big bum now, you know? So, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's not affected me at one point at once. Cause I find that people say, how do you balance them both? I just say you, you do them both at the same time. Because imagine, okay, if I train legs, yeah, for six months, I did no statics and it came back to statics Yeah, it's going to feel heavy because I didn't keep up with it. My legs have probably would have grown, but they didn't keep up. But if you keep up two together, it's going to do no harm. But it's just about having a smart program in anyway. We'll talk about obviously how I train in, in a second, but it's just about planning your sessions properly. So, you know, having a smart program throughout the week so you can maintain both at the same time. Because of course, it's not easy to maintain lifts and statics, but you just got to think about they go hand in hand. Like I'll talk a, a lot more about that in a second, but literally they do go hand in hand, like statics and powerlifting. They both help out each other. I think in my opinion, hundred percent, a lot of people will disagree with me, but they haven't tried it. So they can't really say anything. You know, if you try it and you see, try it first and then see what happens. You never know. It might help you. I mean, I'm not saying you have to power lift. You have to train legs. It's not, it's not a must, but I think it won't do any harm. Personally, in my experience of lifting weights for years now, I've been powerlifting for a couple of years And I've still managed to advance my statics. They've, they've still gone up, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I recommend just giving it a try and just having a positive thought. Just think about, okay, stronger legs means stronger statics because you've got a stronger squeeze. Think about it like that and it will make more sense to you. If you actually really think about it, it will make sense. Cool. When you say uh, you train for power and not for size, um, is it uh, the rep range? Is it the weight? Like how, how, because we received the question as well. People ask, yeah, how do I train legs without gaining mass? Um, what, what's, the yeah, so I just, I just, I just, I just keep it like, I mean, I do, I do various rep ranges. So I like, I, I go heavy, but I don't go heavy too frequently because going too heavy all the time just messes you up, like your CNS and your spine. So I go heavy, like maybe, I go heavy like twice. A month maybe uh like three times a month in a session 
but mainly like I do like I do volume as well. Do I actually do I do volume? I prefer I prefer high volume. But I think like if you look at how bodybuilders train legs, they do like if you look at their leg day, they start off squats, they do lunges, they do split squats, then they end with machines. They do like five leg egg leg exercises in one session. That's probably why they just get big. They don't really train for power, they just train for so obviously they do things like they do their squats. They don't really lock out their knees. They keep the time under tension. I do that sometimes as well to get a nice pump. But yeah, if you look at my leg session, I just do my heavy squats and then my back offsets. And that's my leg session done. So I just do my squats and that's it. Just, I just focus only on the skill of the squat. So squats only. I don't really go on the machines and pump it out because I find that's probably what makes people grow, that their legs grow by doing like the accessory stuff. So they do their compound squats um, then they go on to like, yeah, lunges, like walking lunges, Bulgarian split squats, um, sissy squats, like for high reps. Um, and then obviously the machine sets of 20 on the machine. Um, I did that at one point, actually. I did do that a couple of years ago when I was heavier. I did, like, I used to always do like squats and like do add on extra things just to finish up. But now I only just do the squat, do my heavies first, then do my back sets, And that's my leg session done. And then I got, so I got, a, I got a squat day and a deadlift day. I squat twice a week, I deadlift once a week for now. Mm-hmm. And I think, like I said, I just focus on strength, strength and some volume and that's all. So maybe that's probably why my legs don't grow, but they're, but, but they're strong because I focus on the movement and the weight as well. So that's probably the reason why they don't grow because they yeah, they, they've not really grown crazy amount, but they've grown of course. But I think if I did add in accessory stuff, they grow more. But since my goal is not bodybuilding, I don't really care. You know, so I just keep it basic squats, main squats. That's it. That's what I do in that session. How long does one session take? So a session for me typically takes about average and two hours. Sometimes one hour. It depends. Yeah. So, okay. No, for squats, no, for legs, about an hour. Okay. About an hour. It it sounded really short. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not too long. I do my squats. So I do like, it depends if it's like a volume session, it won't take, it will take 45 minutes if it's volume. because I don't, I go for higher reps and I like, I don't rest too long. If it's like heavies, then yeah. I mean, same thing about an hour because I've, I'll do like a heavy set of five and I'd have to rest like three to five minutes and do that again. So yeah, about an hour. I don't really spend a crazy amount of time on legs, but about an hour on legs. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, let's come to your, like the whole uh, schedule for the week, the whole uh, oh, workout, yeah. workout split. Uh, my, you... my week is, if, if people see, if people hear my week, they'll think, what the hell? But yeah, <laughs> my week, so literally, so um, I'll start from Monday. So on Monday, that's my squat day, but I also planch on Monday as well. I train twice on Monday. Wow. I train twice. So I, I train my squats in the morning. I do Monday morning squats. Monday is like my um, kind of harder day on squats. So that can be like a heavy, like a heavy day. So like a heavy five sets of five or something or three sets of, so like I start with like, for example, like, like a five, uh, heavy five for like three to five sets and then do like three more back off sets on like three sets of eight just to get some volume in and focus on technique. That's my squat day. And I, I now add in weighted pull-ups as well after my squats. So I do squats then weighted pull-ups. And then I um, finish work, then I come home and then I do my statics in the evening. So my statics on Mondays is normally multis and planche push-ups. So that's my Monday. So Monday is squats and planche, planches. Tuesday, um, that's my bench press day and my front lever day. So I bench press on Tuesdays. Same thing, I've got a heavy like heavy heavy bench press or maybe some volume it depends on what i'm doing in in the week it depends on my on my routine but yeah bench press on uh, mondays uh, sorry tuesdays and weighted dips as an accessory after my bench press and in the evening i'll do front lever so front lever holds and presses that's what i'm focusing on at the moment just focusing on getting my front lever strong because my planche is a bit better than my front lever so i'm trying to get my front lever on point as well so i just do uh i work on front lever presses so hold and press i just work on that and then maybe some um like uh, dragon presses after that maybe wednesday that's my uh, deadlift day so wednesday's a deadlift um go for like heavy deadlifts on wednesday uh it depends on the week because i go kind of like 
two weeks heavy, one week light. Because if I go heavy every week, then I'm going to end up burning myself out and hurting myself. So I go I go like a week. So every so maybe one week heavy, one week light. It kind it kind of varies of what I'm doing, what my goals are. But normally, like it's a like a, a heavy deadlift day, and then in the evening, I do planches, but it's very light, like very light planches, like just maybe like fingertip floor planches, just something not to not to not to tax me too much, but just to kind of practice the skill. And Thursdays is my gymnastics day. So I go to uh, the gymnastics center and we just focus. It's like, it's like an open session. So I'll do my flips. I'll do my first, first I'll do my flips on, I'll do my flips first. So my tumbles, my tricking. And then that's like a full on static session after that. Mm-hmm. So it's more tees again, it's plus pushups. It's just everything. It's like a whole full on static session. Cause you know, when you train with your friends, it's like, you've got three hours in the gym. Do you guys just do whatever, just have each other up and just literally you, you do a set. I'm going to film you. You do another set, do a, do a high bar set, do a floor set, like combos. It's not more, it's more combos. So those is like a more, more of a combo day for me. So like, for example, plants, push up, press the hands down, back down, just stuff like that. And Friday, Friday, um, I squat again on Friday, but it's not as heavy as Monday. Like Friday is more of like a volume technique day and uh, I bench press as well. So I squat and bench in one session. And in the evening, um, I actually rest uh, my planche on Friday. I do some light front levers again. I front lever again on Friday. On Friday, and then Saturday is my full-on planche day, like a a day committed for planche. Oh. And then Sunday is a front lever day. So I've got like a bit of a split, like a pull push kind of split. But I train every single day. It's seven days a week I train. Oh. Um, so it's quite a heavy schedule. Um, especially um, now we're off lockdown um, back in so because this whole year has been messed up because I, I um, the gyms were closed so I didn't really get to lift weights much so I s- focused purely on statics the past year I mean I did a bit of lifting but it was here and there it was, I barely did it because gyms were closed every time the gyms opened guess what it opened for two weeks and we closed again so it was very inconsistent but now it's like okay we're fully back hopefully so for the past six weeks I've been doing this schedule People probably will ask me, how do you recover? How do you maintain? Basically, you see, like, okay, as an athlete, right? Like anything you do, whether you're a beginner or advanced athlete, it could you could be anyone. But um, when you first do like a do your first week of training, for example, you do your first leg session, right? How do you feel after your leg session the first time? You can't walk. You can't walk for days. You do a first crazy plant session, you can't, you can't move your shoulders. However, when you carry on that program, after about two weeks four weeks you begin to not ache anymore and that's when the training be- begins to start properly because you can then increase the volume increase the amount of times per week you train it like i can like right now i'm in my sixth week of this of this training uh, program i'm doing my own my own program of training every day and i honestly do not get sore the next day so i can do like a crazy leg session and my legs are fine the next day I can do a crazy plant session. My shoulders are fine. So it's all about adapting to your program. Once you adapt, once, you, once you're able to recover, then that's when you can maintain everything easily as well. Because I find that, of course, if my legs, if I do a crazy leg session, yeah, planching is going to be a bit hard because my legs are sore. They cramp up. However, it's about sticking to the program and adapting, recovering. And that, and that just takes time. Like after like a, a week of training legs or two weeks, you, every, every session, the DOMS will get lighter eventually the will go away. Um, so yeah, I just get my, so I kind of force my body to get used to this program. And now it is, and now there's no issue at all on how to, on how, how to kind of mix everything up. Cause at first, yeah, it does sound a bit tough. Like how do you recover? How do you get time to recover? You just got to adapt. You got to force your body to adapt to your, to your training. Obviously you can make changes to kind of um, progress, but I'm keeping it like this for now anyway, because I'm finding this is like, okay, this is perfect. Now I, I, I train my planche on Monday, for example. Yeah, cool. Tuesday, like, yeah, I don't feel as I, I feel fine. Like, I mean, because people say, "How do you bet? How do you plan for Monday and bench on Tuesday?" That's because, well, like I said, I recover really good now, so I can. Because at first, I began everything slow. Like everything was just about movement. I didn't really. The first two weeks of this kind of program that I'm doing was just about not burning myself out. I kept my RPE about RPE six to eight, so I kept the training about sixty to eighty percent. I I never really max out myself. I always like train. And then that way I can train again the next day. I don't really like to train hard three times a week. I prefer to train a little bit, but every day, if that makes sense. 
I find that kind of and it keeps you it keeps you it keeps you, it keeps you sensible, and you also um, do not get prone to injury as well because I find if you train hard too much, you, that's how you get tendonitis, you get injuries. So I kind of keep my training a bit smart in that sense where I don't go crazy every single day. Of course, some days I, I go hard, but it's like I know if I go hard, then the next day it's like I'm doing something else anyway, so I can still recover from that. And then say so Monday I'll go hard on squats, but then I can recover by Friday for the next squat session. And you know that's that's kind of how I program myself. So not maxing out too much. I mean, so right now I'm six weeks in. I can increase the volume a lot more. I can max out a little bit more and I'll still be fine. Whereas if I did at the beginning, then yeah, I'd be screwed. So it's just about like, it's like anything. You you train and you move. Like even if I did like, for example, lunges, because I don't, I, don't, I don't do lunges right now. But if I did lunges, yeah, my, leg, my legs will be killing. But then if I did lunges for the next one month, my legs will be fine. So that's how you got to take a training, just Get, make your body to adapt. Like I guarantee if you ask any of the, of the top planchers, they probably planch nearly every day. They probably planch like at least five times a week because they can. Whereas a beginner, they have to start light three times a week or maybe a little bit every day, just a little bit, just to feel the movement. And eventually then you you, you increase the, the volume as you adapt to the training. So that's how I see it, yeah. Yeah. So in the beginning, when you start a new training schedule, you start at, I don't know, 50, 60% of, uh, of power? Yeah, about... About 40, 60%. So with me, it's all about going through the technique and the motions. Mm -hmm. And then each week I will, I will increase the RPE scale or the percentage anyway. Because you see muscle, uh, like a really bad muscle soreness the next day as something negative yeah. because you can't continue to train. Yeah, because when, you, when you're sore, it just, it's just, I mean, you can still train, but it's not as comfortable to train. Mm -hmm. But I find that no matter, like over time, that soreness will go away. And when that soreness goes away, then it makes life a lot easier. Like, when I'm a winner, because I didn't really bench press much before, but now I bench press. And I remember the first bench press day, my shoulders and chest were in pain. Like, and it just affects my planche the next day. Like, I can't planche properly. <laughs> Or even two days after that, it's like, I'm trying to planche and I've got doms in my shoulders and chest. <laughs> um, but so, so I kind of, so if you're trying something new, if you want to, so if you want to in incorporate something, so if you just say, for example, if you just planche every day, whatever, but you want to start doing front levers, then in front lever should start a bit, either you separate the days or you start off light in the front lever and then, and then slowly bring it up the volume every week or so. As your body gets stronger, it responds better to it and then it can go harder. Like you probably will do like a session where you do like three sets of like a, I don't know, like a three sets of 10 seconds or I don't know. For example, three sets of 10 seconds, the first session that might mash you up. The week after, oh, maybe I can do another set now. And then the week after that, oh, I can do even more because your body doesn't, you know, your body starts to, you know, get used to it. So for me, it's all about adaptation, getting your body used to something. And then once it is used to something, you can then progress, progress it and everything else at the same time. Yeah. And you also uh, said RPE um, and uh, RIR are like uh, two things that uh, are often oftenly used. Um, can you maybe explain uh, these terms more for the people who don't know them? Yeah. So basically that's like a scale where on how, so a scale of RPE one to 10, that's how you feel doing the exercise. So say for example, if you do an extremely heavy deadlift, that's going to be like an RPE eight. If you go like a one rep max, that's a 10. And even like, for example, if you go for like a maximum plant hold, like that's going to be like an RP 10 or something. So I kind of, so that's so basically what I do and what I get people to do as well is to avoid maxing out. So for example, if my deadlift, my deadlift max for instance would be like two, 250 or something, that's like an RP 10, of course. But if I want to do that, if I want to deadlift that day, but focus on form technique and volume, then I'll scale it down to like, like RP6, RP4 to 6. So I'll go down to like 200, even less, like 180, and focus on just doing reps. And that way it doesn't gas you out too much and you can still live the next day. Because if you like, that's why I don't really max out too much in my training. Because if I max out, next day I can't, next day then your CNS is down, you can't do nothing the next day. So if you, if you want to train frequently in the week, then sometimes it's better to kind of keep the RP a bit lower. So... You probably finish the session thinking I can do more, but save it for save it for tomorrow or the next session. There's no there's, there's no reason to be burning up every session because you think yeah go hard to go home. That saying is now is long gone now because yeah you go hard to go home and then you're gonna wake up next day with tender nights. You're, you're gonna be screwed. So I always like even my plant sessions like I've got days where I go hard, but I can always 
planche at the end. But I still, yeah, I'm good. So, so a hard plant session would be you can't planche, you can't do even a tuck planche afterwards. That's when you know you're you're messed up. But because, but after that, you need to rest about a couple. You have to rest a few days, and obviously that's fine. I mean, if you want to go go have like three hard days or two hard days in a week, that's up to you. But I prefer for skill training. I think it's better for you to do it um, more frequently but less intense, because with skills it's like a mind and body connection. So like I said, train planche. Every day, most days, most days about four, most days, that's just every day. But it's keeping keeping RP six to eight so I can carry on training the next day and focusing on like the technique and not burning myself out. Because when you burn yourself out, your tendons and joints will take a big hit and that will take about a week or two to recover. And that's also how people get injured. So I try not to get get myself injured by doing by going too hard. So you've got to keep your training smart and not get too overexcited. So literally sometimes keep your sets up to five, nothing more. Five sets of, uh, so five sets, for example, say your max planche is like, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, 10 seconds. Then you do, then you will do five sets of like six to eight seconds, something lower. So you can do sets of that rather than trying to do a max, max hold every set. You'd be bet you'd be guessing out each time, and then you and then you and you're done. You're done for. You're done for. You can't do nothing else after that. So I'd rather do like three sets of like a comfortable number, so I can focus on technique, volume, and not break, and not break myself down, and then go off and do like a regression and do the same kind of thing. And that way, it's like okay, I feel good. Next day, you can do something similar again, or the day after that, and that way you won't feel you won't feel too taxed, and that way you can include more volume in the week rather than so you can spread the volume across the week rather than in one day. And I just find that, like personally, I went, I went through a stage where I was planching, like a few months ago, I was planching pretty much every day with the same principle. So every day I kept it 60 to 80%. And my seconds increased by a lot because my body just got so used to the planche. It, it just became a daily thing. And I literally just progressed a lot from doing that. Same thing for my front lever. I'm doing front lever more often now. And so less intense, but more often. And it just seems to feel better each time. Um, of course, I'm going to have a day or two in the future where I'll just do like a crazy plant session where I can't plant no more. But I just I just try to avoid that because I've done that before. One time I did like a crazy volume. I did like 10 seconds planch for 10 sets. Um, I could have done, actually could have done more sets, but that was like literally 90% and my shoulders and everything was dead and I couldn't planch properly for the rest of the week. And for me, it's like, man, I just feel like I've lost gains in that week. You know, I mean, I'm not really a fan of resting. I prefer to just, like I said, spread the volume across the week and feel the movement each day or each every other day. I find that you get more benefit from doing that, in my opinion, anyway. It's kind of like what gymnasts do. It's a thing called grease, grease in the groove, doing it bit bit by bit but every day by not maxing out. It's very popular in, in terms of skill training as well in, in gymnastics or calisthenics. Gymnasts, they do that every single day. They train every day. Gymnasts train every single day. They'll go on, they'll do planching every day. They'll do their routine every day. But they do it so that way it's not maxing out every day. So a bit of the routine every day, and that way they can progress the routine rather than doing one crazy routine once a week. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you're gonna get. I mean, by the time you recover, you're gonna be good. But it's like your body hasn't felt the routine in so long. It's like you kind of forget it. So I always kind of like tell people to train their skills often, but not maxing out. But no, I don't feel. I don't feel like I got enough in the session. That's the whole point. It's about training smart, not hard. It's about stimulating your muscles, not annihilating them. So I always say, yeah, stimulate, don't annihilate. And feel the movement at least four or five times a week, if possible, if that's your goal. And I've, I mean, for people, for, for a lot of people that works, but it's you have to kind of um, have that where you, like for a beginner, that wouldn't work because they're going to get crazy muscle soreness. But a month in from their training, they can start doing that, I, I recommend. Like after a month of training a planche, you should be able to recover faster. That way you can do it more often in the week. So that's one thing I say to everyone, try to train it often, but do not tax yourself too much. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> Definitely. It's a lot of input, but I think it's uh, really, really valuable and um definitely something that i see a lot and uh like not only beginners make these mistakes and also myself when i only have like two or three days uh in a week yeah. where i where i ha uh, am allowed or like where i have the time to to train yeah, so i go 100 but then uh like the the muscle pain is unreal um yeah 
And so it, it feels feels the same that uh, the progress yeah, is going yeah. away even uh, through these sessions. Um, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's grease and groove is definitely. I recommend that that method of training for sure. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. The second part will be uploaded on June third, so exactly one week after this upload. Keep growing and see you in the next episode, guys. Mm-hmm.